The beta for update 2022.6 has just been released. This one's a much quieter update compared to some of the other ones that we've had in recent releases, but nevertheless it's still a great update with some great new features and some awesome speed optimizations. Check it out. What's going on guys, I hope you're all doing well. Before we jump into this, I want to just quickly point out that this is the beta release of 2022.6, so there may be a couple of bugs hanging about, and some of the features and changes that I talk about today may actually be removed or even held back from next week's full release. If you are interested in getting involved in the beta, you can do this at any point by heading into settings, choosing system, and then in the top right corner selecting the three dots and choosing join beta. You'll then have access to all of the new beta features and if you don't like it or you have any issues you can leave at any point by following the same process but choosing leave beta. You can also just roll back to a previous backup providing you make those all important backups. With that all said let's have a look at the 5 features that I really like in 2022.6. Kicking this off with my first feature then is the repositioned YAML tab. In the previous update there were lots of new UI changes and tweaks and the YAML configuration, the thing that gives you the configuration checker and all of the different reloads, that was moved under developer tools but it was placed as the last tab. Lots of people wanted this to be the first tab so when you select developer tools it takes you straight to that and that's exactly what this change does. So now when you open up the developer tools it will take you straight to that YAML tab where you can check your configurations and do your various different reloads. And if you didn't actually realise, the developer tools actually remembers which tab you were in, so if you change tab and navigate away, when you come back it will jump you straight to whichever tab you were last in, unless you're in a new session where the default tab is going to be the YAML page. So from the smallest to probably one of the biggest features of the update, we've got my second feature and that's the logbook enhancements. The logbook received a ton of love in this update, there was lots of backend optimizations with querying and processing, and the combined results of all of these things give a smooth user experience and also live data. Opening the logbook should now be instantaneous, and if you set your end date to be in the future, you'll see all of the data update live. As well as being able to see the data update in real time, the logbook's also had a nice formatting change so it's a bit easier to read and looks nicer on the screen. As well as being able to find all that information underneath logbook, you'll also now be able to find the logbook in a new card in your devices and also in a new card underneath your areas. In the area one, you'll be able to see all of the logs for the devices that are associated with that area. Another cool thing that the logbook can do is it can view device events and this is going to be really useful when you combine that with that real time view as you'll be able to test out and debug devices whilst viewing the logbook and it's also great for devices that don't have a device event so things like button presses for, with buttons from Philips Hue and Shelley. Up next we've got a new feature for the energy dashboard and that's energy comparisons. This feature does exactly what it says and it's going to allow you to compare your production and also your consumption of energy based on a previous day, week, month or year. On your energy dashboards you'll now notice this new button in the top right corner called compare data. When you select this whatever time scale you have selected will be compared against the previous one. So in this case here I'm selecting a day and it's comparing it to the day before. This is noted at the banner at the top of the energy dashboard and you'll also notice it in the usage and production graphs. So I can see here the colours that are in the transparent clearer colour on the left are the previous day and the one after it are the current day. Currently the comparison isn't reflected in the widget or in your individual devices but I do believe that this is planned for a future update. And again just to show you here when you're selecting that time scale with the compare data if you can change this to it would be a week, a month and also a year. Moving on to our penultimate feature and this one's another small one but it's a very welcome change to the scene editor. If you previously utilised creating and setting scenes in Home Assistant you'll know that when you set your scene it would add a device and all of the entities along with it. But now what you can do is you can create and set a scene based on specific entities and not the whole device. Being able to set and reload a scene is going to be really useful. An example of this could be a device where you've got multiple different entities and features. So something like say a diffuser where you've got a light and also a mist generator. You might want to set a scene where you only have the light turn on as opposed to the whole device turning on where it's going to trigger the mist turning on and also the lights. And even though it's a very small feature it is going to give you a bit more flexibility and a bit more fine granularity with actually creating different automations with setting and reloading scenes. And if for whatever reason you're not aware of what scenes are in Home Assistant or you don't use them, 
Scenes allow you to actually capture a set of states that a device is currently in, and now also not just devices, you can capture individual entities. With that scene set, you can then reload that scene and use it somewhere else, like in a script or an automation. One example of how I make use of scenes is I have my lights flash a series of colours based on some notifications. I then reload the scene which sets a default state on my lights so they return back to a normal colour rather than being crazy colours all the time. And that brings us nicely onto our final feature of the day, which is calendar offsets. If you've been staying up to date with your Home Assistant news, you'll know that in the last update, calendar triggers got added. Calendar offsets were also mentioned in the last update, but they've finally been added in this release. You can utilize calendar offsets in automations and scripts to either trigger a series of actions or just simply to get a push notification reminding you that it's time to leave or that you've got a meeting upcoming. And the reason that this one's made it into the feature list is because now using offsets and just being able to use calendar triggers, you can finally create your own scheduled system in Home Assistant. So you can use a calendar to actually create events and have automations trigger and actually run based on whatever's in your calendar. And this is great for reoccurring notifications or reoccurring events. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five new features that I really like in the 2022.6 beta release. If you are running the beta, do ensure that if you encounter any issues or problems, make sure you get them reported so that they can get fixed before next week's full release. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong that notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. And as always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. If you want to see how you can use Home Assistant to create your own alarm system, then check out this video just here. Or if you want to see how I'm using Home Assistant in my own home, then check out this video here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.